I don't really believe in the whole therapy thing. I think being resilient is key because you can't be broken down or be beat by a lot of things. I mean, life is never fair. But personally, I felt that I was only able to break out of my cycle after going for therapy because we are still so young. We haven't had enough experience or also like professional like knowledge. In secondary school, I was actually going through like a really tough time. Someone told me that I wasn't worthy of seeking help because I was already in a privileged position. And this actually kind of pushed me back from going to therapy for a while. I think it's just important to not take other people's like words to heart because sometimes they are also going through their own things that things come out wrongly. If you need to seek help, go and seek help. I wouldn't really go for therapy because I feel like you need to kind of hold yourself accountable first. I feel like talking about it with my friends is enough for me. What that accountability of being a good friend means when it's time for them to hear something difficult like you should seek help, that has to be said. Like. Sometimes I feel that when, you, when we share something, there is a possibility that we may exaggerate too much. I fear that somebody might self-diagnose themselves. Maybe on one thing is like, okay, it's a way that we make sense of what we're going to do. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's I don't cool. think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But at the same time, it's like, maybe sometimes not everything has to be labeled, right? Yeah. Because yeah. maybe some people are jumping on the bed, right? To be accepted. Like, you know how we're so scared we can't right? not. But like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, I feel like, it's still important that like, in authentic, like, Spaces like this that we are able to talk about things. I was diagnosed with OCD when I was like 12. It's really just like a lot of intrusive thoughts telling you like this is so germy. If you touch it, you touch someone else, the other person is gonna die, and you are a bad person. I also remember like hearing one auntie saying that I was like attention seeking lah, which really hurt. But I mean, I don't really hold it against like anyone because people are trying to figure out like. What you do feel also. My parents were also like confused, like, like mad, you know. Even yeah, until now, my parents still have a stigmatization towards like mental health and everything. It was really hard for me to tell them that I was actually seeking help because it would be that they didn't do good enough, you know? They didn't give me a good enough childhood. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm really yeah. Being 27, a lot of my friends now are beginning to work, so they're all in that transitionary phase of I need to hustle harder, I need to have it all more together. It's, it's quite, it can be quite commonplace for people to think that, you know, uh, men should be the ones who are more masculine. That actually, like, I guess for a lot of us, it's hard to share, apart from like banker and like jokes, because suddenly when I try to change topic, it's like a bit, eh? Yeah, it felt a bit awkward. Yeah, yeah, it felt like a bit not in place. That's like a running thing for as guys, you know, like starting the conversation is like the hardest part. As much as I'm very expressive, there's also a part of me that's like you don't want to burden your friends or your loved ones with like all of these emotions and feelings lah. That's when I realised I needed to seek professional help. The very nice thing is like friends, you reply and you'll be like, this is what I'm struggling with as well. And then you realise that, damn, it's really a very human experience lah that people struggle. Uh, in 2017, I received a screenshot of a wake at like a block for my childhood friend. So when I received that text, <laughs> the thing is, she was the most like unexpected. She always gave people hugs, and she was always very bubbly. So I feel so shit. Cause like, even though. I'm going through my own things. I should have tried to reach out. And it really changed the way I, I had try and treat my friends. It's cause like, the last thing I want to hear is someone just going away for good, you know? If they don't want to talk to you, it's fine. But at least knowing that your presence is there is so much more valuable than just letting it happen. <laughs> Yeah. Must have taken you so much because I feel like this is this your first time sharing? Not really, it's just mm. I don't think I have come to terms with it. I feel regretful, but at the same time it really taught me a, a huge thing. I'm so sorry for your stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's take a few minutes break. Showbiz, baby. Having conversations like that, this is like a very practical way for people to open up and talk about things and sharing vulnerable stories. The younger generation might be a lot more open to talk about it, but when I'm sharing with my elder relatives, right, they'll say, Kai Sing Tiu Hao, which is, as long as you're happy, it's okay. Yeah, which is very simplistic, but I found like it to be heartwarming, actually, because they have gone through a lot of shit. But they recognise that happiness and joy is important at the end of the day. One thing I do notice is seeking like professional help has always been the go-to. But what about yeah. casual <clears throat> help? We have a support group for people. It'd be great if our like you know local community centers organize these things more. It doesn't have to be large scale. As long as one person finds it useful and you've already done your part, you know. And also with uh, workplaces, I think now they're very, very on the ball with mental health talks, wellness programs. I wanted to add on for that because I actually see the change in my dad. I didn't really see him in my childhood because overworking, hustling. yeah, hustling. But these recent years, like past two years, suddenly the company is starting having this mental health workshop. So I see him change and like he's like very open in talking about nice. or it, yeah, it's just open conversations now. So it's really nice. In schools itself, you know how we have general checkup for our body each year? Oh, yeah. oh, but yeah. make it a mental health checkup. Screen. Everyone has to go through this. So they're not see seeing it as like, oh, like only this person needs help, then they go. A lot of these children, they don't even know the basis of seeking help. Starting from young, teaching them how to manage emotions is so important. Then I think on like more structural level, is there a way that there can be more subsidies? Right, that are more readily available for people who need it. Like it's the same thing as checking your own physical health. Fun fact, secondary school, I was forced into counselling and I didn't really like it. And that also kind of shaped how I don't really believe in the whole therapy thing. But after everything, that we hold, you know, the whole, whole thing today, I think, yeah, I might go. Yes, you, all of you did this. <laughs> you did this to me.